I remember when a long, long time ago, actually so long ago I still had hair, uh, when just making a phone call was a process. Back then, most households had a rotary dial phone, and it sucked dialing nine, took forever. Because I was the youngest, I always had to ask for permission, and then I had to wait until the grown-ups were finished. So for the majority of my life, it's been inefficient uh, to make a phone call. And over that time period, there was incremental improvements along the way, but nothing transformative until about 10 years ago when Apple cracked the code as certain technologies began converging and enabled them to reimagine what a phone could be or should be, and using that to create smarter, more efficient communication devices such that now the smartphones that we have in our pockets are supercomputers that with a touch of a button, we can pretty much call anywhere in the world at any time for free, mostly. And so you may be asking yourself why in a talk about transportation, I'm talking about phones. Well, let me get there. But first, let me start at the beginning. I'm German, as all of you can obviously tell by my blonde hair and blue eyes. And about 125 years ago, two of my countrymen, Gottlieb Daimler and Karl-Heinz Benz, invented the car. And then about 100 years ago, Henry Ford brought it to the masses with the invention of the assembly line. However, since then, nothing drastic has really changed in the last 100 years in the way vehicles are designed, built, and sold. Why? Why, when we have another set of tremendous convergence of technologies and advanced and additive manufacturing and vehicle electrification and augmented reality and in autonomy, obviously, why are we still thinking about the car the same way we always have? Actually, today's vehicle manufacturers want more of the same. They want more gigantic factories that are not sustainable. Think about Detroit. They want more complex products that have slower innovation cycles that take five to seven years to go from concept to production ready. I'm sure some of you are still waiting on your Model 3s. And then they have a stated objective of putting more vehicles on the road, creating more congestion to our already over-congested roads, which means longer commutes and less productivity for society. And so therefore, it sounds like they want more inefficiency, not less. And so why is that? Especially when they want us to continue to pay for that inefficiency. According to AAA, the average new vehicle costs anywhere around $8,500 a year to own and maintain. So if a family has two vehicles, that costs about $50 a day. And what are we getting for that? I drove here today. What's my vehicle doing right now? Nothing. The light passenger vehicle gets about 5% utilization. And it's designed to hold five occupants. But normally only one occupant is in the vehicle driving. So that means at 5% utilization and 20% load factors, we have 1% efficiency. And we're paying $50 a day for that? There's got to be a better way, right? Well, not necessarily. I think today's vehicle manufacturers have solutions looking for problems to solve future transportation challenges. Take GM, and I won't pick on anybody in particular, but I'll mention GM. They, car sharing was hot, Uber and Lyft, right? And so they came out with Maven, or Ford has a transit. They invested in Chariot. So now they have city solutions. Maybe not so much. 
potentially they're just looking at the car the same way that they always have. And they're accepting the status quo of inefficiency and cost that they always have with incremental improvements along the way. So let's agree today that we have an efficiency problem and a cost problem in today's car industry. And what we also have to remember from Henry Ford 100 years ago is he didn't have to make faster horses. And today, we don't need to make faster cars, but we need to rethink and the, the use of the latest and greatest technology and tools to rethink the way cars are designed, built, and sold in order to enable the, uh, the transformation of transportation. So we went back to the drawing board, and this is what we came up with. This is the end. The end of the assembly line. The end of the showroom floor. The end of the smooth-talking salesman. The hard sell. The soft sell. The oversized inflatable gorillas. And overinflated inventory that absolutely must go. This is the end of the junkyard full of old cars leaching chemicals into the ground. Born from the concept of cradle-to-cradle -cradle manufacturing, printed in front of you to be the exact car you want. Melted, deconstructed, and rebuilt to be the next car you need. This is where vehicle manufacturing as we know it comes to an end. And where vehicle manufacturing as it should be begins. So we at Local Motors believe in the power of the crowd, both online and offline, to design and develop vehicles globally, and then using advanced manufacturing methods across a network of micro factories to make, upgrade, and recycle vehicles locally. Our goal is to enable the transformation of transportation by striving for less. Less factory footprint for more sustainability locally. Less product complexity to enable more innovation faster, taking concepts to production ready in less than six months. And less vehicles on the road, having less congestion, shorter commutes, more productivity for society, and opening real estate for better and higher uses. So if we really rethink and redefine what a vehicle is and how we can make vehicles locally, then we can really think about new mobility systems. So in a new mobility system, potentially a four-tiered one, let's talk about tiers four and three and leave that for another talk because we'll let Sir Richard Branson and Elon and Jeff Bezos fight over space rights or whether Hyperloop is gonna take us across the country or some other form of transportation. But today, let me focus on tier two and tier one. At the tier two level across cities and regions, we're primarily dependent on heavy, fast vehicles. But do we really need a Tesla in ludicrous mode to go down the street and pick up some groceries? Or could we develop local mobility solutions focused on light, slow vehicles that are connected, shared, electric, and autonomous to get us around our neighborhoods? And let's take it one step further. Should that local mobility solution be the same for a city like New York with eight million residents and five square miles as it looks for a city like Detroit with 700,000 residents across 139 square miles? No, it should not. It should be different. It should be efficient based on local requirements. Because remember, worst, worst case, we have to make access to and convenience of transportation just greater than 1% efficient at less than $50 a day in order to surpass what we're currently getting out of Stuttgart or Motown 
with that one size fits all approach. Speaking of Detroit, while I am German and I live in DC, I call Detroit home and I'm fond of it. And while it's making great strides at a comeback, I actually happen to work for the mayor, not the one in jail, but <laughs> it's still very critical for the future of transportation and the automotive industry. However, the new, more efficient mobility frontier will be created outside of Detroit city limits by people, organizations, and cities that are looking for new and better ways to make vehicles locally, to then transport goods and people efficiently and economically. Thank you. <laughs>